Howdy everyone. So when I originally started this channel, the goal was not to be some, you know, overtly correct and, you know, fiery, I'm smarter than everybody teacher. It was to, for whoever's listening and whoever's paying attention, whoever really wants to know, um, make aware of those who might, you know, happen upon this channel and I lean on the spirit to do that because it's, it's always his job to direct those that are to learn from other parts of the body um, what's coming and, and what God's plan is and, and what we're supposed to look out for. Um, I've always I've always assumed whoever was supposed to see this would. So my intention was to make people aware of what I feel like I've been made aware of, um, share as much of that information as I can, make it as biblical as I can, and um, let you all know you know about these end times that we're in and what we're supposed to be looking out for and what the Bible is pointing towards so that when the time does come we know what's going on so I'm going to make a uh, this is essentially version 2.0 of an Antichrist's origin story uh, based on the biblical um, the biblical evidence that, that's given to us and, and I think directly shows what it is we're supposed to be looking out for and um, the reason is, is because, you know, misinformation, disinformation is an all time high. And, you know, again, not to be conspiratorial, but you guys know that there's certain people we're not allowed to talk about. So just by way of me making this video and being more explicit in what I say about who I'm about to talk about, uh, I risk having this whole women, I, I risk having everything shut down. And, and so those of you who see this, will understand what I'm talking about and why, because you probably already have an inkling as to who I'm talking about at this point already. Um, but it's necessary because the Bible points towards it and uh, I, I'm not going to be quiet about literally God's heads up that he gives to his people. So, all throughout the Bible, it's pretty clear the Antichrist's father, in a sense. And, and if we look back at Genesis 3, 13 through 15, it's very clear that Antichrist is called the seed of Satan. The literal, um, almost, I don't want to say genetic outpouring because, you know, it's, it's clear angels and humans can't procreate. But if we look at Genesis 6, it's also clear that angels have a knowledge of the, what we call genetic makeup of human beings so as to be able to, as it said, go into the daughters of men and create this fallen race of what, were called the men of renown, super creatures, if you will, giants, if you want to call it that. That was a really limited uh, translation from the Greek out of the Hebrew, but Nephilim literally means fallen ones. So it doesn't just mean that they were giants. Some of them very well could have been and likely were, but uh, they were super strong, super fast, super smart, and quickly dev devolved the earth into a state of such sinful, horrific, disgusting chaos that it 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 brought about the flood, and it was the right thing to do. Obviously, God did it. So um, I'm going to read that verse real quick. Then the Lord God said to the woman, this is verse 13, what is this you have done? And she replied, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are more, you are accursed more than any other wild beast or animal. You shall go on, on your belly and eat dust all of your days of your life. And I shall place hostility between you and the woman, that is between your seed and her seed. In other words, he, Christ, will attack you head on. Uh, and that, that would be at the cross. But you will attack him from behind. And, and in the Greek, or in the Hebrew rather, that literally says from the, you will attack his heel. In other words, it will be a sneaky from behind attack um, that is characteristic of a snake bite. And, you know, obviously the snake itself was possessed. It wasn't actually the snake. It was the one who inhabited the snake. But there is a very good reason why Satan is called a serpent and a dragon all throughout scripture and reason why there's an enmity between snakes and humans it's because we always have this constant even today uh reminder that satan acts like a slithering serpent snake who will deceive you and literally attack you in a way that you would not expect and in this case from the heel right um we have to understand too that it goes out of its way to claim again the seed because Although, again, Satan, being an angel, doesn't have a genetic makeup to be able to modify human beings in a copulatory manner the way humans have babies, uh, he clearly has the ability somehow to take our DNA matter, whatever you want to call it, and create a seed. So it is very, very likely, based just upon this verse, that on the satanic origin side, the non-human side origin of 
Antichrist, he is likely a Nephilim. That doesn't mean that I know this exclusively, but that very clearly, in my opinion, shows a direct a direct connection between Genesis 6 that would happen just a few verses later. And it's it's no mistake. These, these uh, word forms are near identical, if not identical, in the Hebrew, and it's intentional, right? And we see this over and over throughout Scripture where a verse will be harkened back and use the exact same terminology and phraseology so as to connect the dots, if you will. And again, if we all spoke ancient Hebrew, this would be a lot easier to see, but you have to take my word for it or go to ichthus.com and look up the Antichrist and his paternal origins uh, in the Satanic Rebellion series, or I'm sorry, in the Tribulational series, the coming tribulation. Um, he goes into great depth to explain the um, the hermeneutics and the etymologies. In other words, the, the, the basis and the background of the wording in the languages and how they connect and how it's like a perfect puzzle piece and it's not to be ignored if we can help it. Um, let's see here. Goes into Genesis 6. So we have to understand too, there's a certain amount of mimicry that goes on between Antichrist and Christ, right? His whole goal is to fool and there's always this this dialectic that's that's contrived. In other words, there's always a story of a problem that's rising that doesn't involve God, doesn't involve Christ, but that only Satan can answer. You guys are looking at the world devolve into the madness that it is right now. You're seeing a bunch of quote unquote truth tellers um, be, I don't want to say persecuted because it all, again, it seems contrived. It all seems fake and, and planned and never any mention of Jesus Christ, but only a mention that the truth is being suppressed, right? So there is a certain element to this that is truthful, but that goes along with Satan's modus operandi where he always takes just a kernel of truth, mixes it a bunch of, uh, amongst a bunch of lies and tries to make himself seem like the only option as a savior. That is very much Antichrist's whole goal. Hence the reason why it's said that he, is, he strikes the heel, right? Let's go on to his maternal origin. Now, I'm just gonna say this. There is every indication that Antichrist comes from a Hebrew Jewish heritage. Not only that he comes from a Hebrew Jewish heritage, but specifically comes from the tribe of Dan. Um, the first verses we see this in actually, where it directly connects Dan to the serpent's seed is in Genesis 49, 16 through 18, where Jacob is uh, pronouncing the blessings and cursings to his sons and their position in the future of Israel as a nation uh, after his passing. So. Um, verse 16, Genesis 49, Dan, and in this case, in the person of Antichrist, will judge his people as if he were of the tribes of Israel, as if he were one of the tribes of Israel. And this is where a lot of the modern translations get this wrong. Uh, they make it seem like he's on their side, but then you go into the next verses, but Dan, in other words, Antichrist in this case, will be a serpent beside the road, a viper beside the path, one who strikes at a horse's heels so that its rider falls off backwards. And then Jacob makes a pronouncement to God saying, O Lord, I wait in your deliver I wait for your deliverance, O Lord. Now, the reason why we can tell, just based on the English translations, that this verse is constantly mistra mistranslated is because verse 16 makes it seem like he's on their team, but then in 17, it calls him a serpent beside the road, a viper beside the path, one who strikes at the rider's heels, very much the exact same linguistic used to describe the serpent seat and how he will attack the heel. Um, but also hearkening back to it being a, a basically a, a satanic um, affiliation by, by mentioning the serpent at all. Because again, serpent, dragon, snake, all of those things always refer to Christ. I'm, I'm sorry, to Antichrist. Forgive me there. So the identification of Dan as a serpent, it doesn't need to be elaborated on more than we can look throughout scripture and see that there's always a negative association. Now, Dan is also left off the list of tribes uh, who supply the 144,000. Uh, so in, the, in, the, in this prophecy of the end of times, uh, the tribe of Dan is temporarily considered as if it were illegitimate because of its association with Antichrist. That's the only thing that makes sense. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Um, let's see what else here. Sorry, there's a whole bunch of information here. Deuteronomy 33.22, uh, we see Moses also pronounce the blessings on the 12 tribes, but then he reiterates Jacob's curse. 
And again, this was a, an utterance from God. And though Moses may have known about Jacob's original prayer, which he likely did, uh, this one came from the Lord. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He will spring forth out of Bashan. Bashan was a region north of Israel across the Jordan, and its scriptural connotations are hardly positive. It was the home of the Rephaim, the, the tall people that people, Israelites, called Nephilim. And Antichrist is essentially one of the latter types. So the, the connection there is hard to miss. The bulls of Bashan in Psalm 22, 12, symbolize the assaults of the devil against our Lord Jesus Christ. And the cows of Bashan typify, typify the materialistic apostasy of the women of, northern, of the northern kingdom during the reign of Jeroboam in Amos 4, 1. So there's a bunch of different connections, both of which images relate directly to a satanic and anti-spiritual connection. Bashan, Bashan is also associated with Tyre in Ezekiel 27, 6, with the sea, also a sign of evil and, and death and judgment, Psalm 68, 22, and with the slaughter of the armies of Antichrist at Armageddon in Ezekiel 39, 17 through 20. So these things are connected and tied together repeatedly over and over again, pointing us in a certain direction that we should not miss out on. Uh, and also know that associations of these uh, remind us respectively of Antichrist's home country, which is Tyre, Babylon, or in other words, the far west, uh, uh, the, the farthest islands, in other words, the United States. And if you guys have been watching this channel at all, you'll know that I firmly believe the United States is Mystery Babylon. It's the only country right now that's even in a position to be able to take on that mantle. And we're already supremely arrogant, much like both Rome and the original Babylon were, and it's very, very hard to mistake. So forgive me if you haven't caught on to that just yet, or you're just getting into this. Maybe you should look back into my other uh, videos, but I have an entire series on uh, Mystery Babylon, its origins, um, how it's it's the origin country of Antichrist, and how um, this place earns its place as the, uh, the, the last massive bastion of evil and sin that is utterly wiped out before the Lord returns in Revelation, which you guys already know about. Um, here's a good one. Check this out. The Hebrew phrase used here of Dan, lion's whelp, is identical to that used of Judah in 49.9. In that earlier prophetic passage about Judah, the lion's whelp is, as we've already pointed out already, a clear symbol of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Revelation 5.5. 5. The characterization of Dan in Deuteronomy 32, 33.22 as a lion, one found nowhere else in scripture, is hardly accidental because he's going to copy him. Check this out. Given that this lion was hostile, has hostile intent towards his own people, his own kin, we are right to see in the symbolism not only a, prof a prophecy of Antichrist which ascribes his maternal origins to the tribe of Dan, but also another clear indication of the deliberate mimicry of the Messiah which will constitute a large part of Antichrist's um, modus operandi, his his whole his whole uh, portrayal to the earth and the way that he's going to be that white horse riding, uh, bow touting, so he's sneaky even though he's riding a, a white horse and putting himself off as being a hero. Um, in other words, the beast has a mouth like a lion, meaning another, meaning among other things that he will claim to be the Messiah, Revelation 13, 2. So in other words, his copying of Christ all the way till the end is going to be one of his most salient characteristics, one of the most clear indications that he is the Antichrist. And uh, though indirect, it will, there will be hints of this early in his rise. And then as he gets going, gaining steam, essentially in the first half of the tribulation, you'll see more and more people join in on this. And that's the whole goal is to make him seem like he's like Christ. And going upon this, it is not unrealistic that even though he is a Danite, he will claim to be from Judah specifically so as to take, take credit for Christ's position as the true Messiah. So as to fool as many as possible. So don't miss that. He's going to claim he's from Judah, although we know he's from Dan, based upon what Scripture says. The association of Dan with the Antichrist and these two important, these two critically important prophecies about the futures of the twelve tribes from Jacob and Moses, respectively, is in keeping with numerous other negative references to Dan in Scripture, many of which have prophetic. Uh, implications. The coming of the Babylonian invasion Babylonian invasion from the north is a prophetic type of the invasion of Antichrist, the king of eschatological end times, Babylon, who likewise will come from the north against Israel. And this invasion is associated with Dan in several, several times in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, here's Jeremiah 4, 7. 
and force 15 through 16. So force seven, a lion, uh, in other words, Nebuchadnezzar as a type of antichrist has come forth from his lair and set out to destroy the nations. That's also Jeremiah 25, 32 through 38, especially verse 38. He has set out from his place to devastate your, in other words, Israel's land. He will lay waste to your cities until they have no inhabitants. So much like, again, I've posted and, st and stated in other videos, most, most prophecies are dual in application and for a reason. And they use a lot of the same verbiage in the original prophecy and the, the secondary application, again, for a reason, because it harkens back to other parts of scripture that put these notions together into a, into a manner that if we could see these things in the original language, it would be that much more clear, though it is fairly clear here in English, as we can see. Um, he will always tear cities until they have no inhabitants. So uh, here's Jeremiah 4, 15. For a voice is proclaiming from Dan and announcing trouble from Mount Ephraim. Make it known to the nations. Behold, proclaim, against, proclaim it against Jerusalem. Blockaders are coming from a land far away. That's from Babylon. And they will lift their voices against the cities of Judah. So at some point, and, and you guys know this, halfway through the tribulation, Antichrist essentially flips the script, breaks the seven-year peace treaty that he makes with Israel and promises to protect them from other nations and decides to become its primary aggressor until he takes over, kills the two prophets, and then sets himself down as Christ in the temple, puts up the abomination of desolation, Israel flees into the desert, so on. All those things happen. That is exactly what that prophecy is referring to. The Basically, the, the changing of his... What's the word? Well, basically taking the mask off, for lack of a better way to put it. He changes his orientation towards Israel and becomes its main aggressor instead of its main protector as he had come to be known up to that point. In chapter 8, of Jer in chapter 8, Jeremiah's picture of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's attack is highly reminiscent of Ezekiel's description of Gog, Antichrist. See my video on Gog Magog that I just made. His future invasion of Israel as his mounted hordes swarm across the land. So it's talking about not only the takeover, but likely uh, Armageddon itself. So again, multiple repeated prophecies. Uh, let's see, Jeremiah 8, 16 through 17. From Dan is heard the snorting of his horses. The whole earth shakes from the neighing of his mighty steeds. And that's from Ezekiel 38, 4 as well. For they have come and are devouring the land and its fullness, the cities along with their inhabitants. For behold, I am going to send them among you as serpents and as vipers, which cannot be charmed. And they will bite you, says the Lord. Dan is also associated more closely with idolatry than any, and apostasy than any other tribe. That's from Judges 18 through 13. 1830 and 31, 1 Kings 12, 28 through 30, Amos 814, and also uh, Leviticus 24, 11 talks about the half Israelite Danite of a Jewish mother who blasphemes the Lord. So there's a history of this and, 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 and gosh, so many, uh, the, the tribe of Dan belongs to the group of tribes who utter the curses from Mount Ebal instead of the blessings of Mount Gerizim. Uh, Dan, Dan's gemstone is, is the, the chrysolite or the goldstone. Uh, Tarshish is the way it's pronounced in Hebrew, and it very much is the gemstone of commercialism. It's gold, it shows a gaudiness, it shows a desire for wealth, um, so many things. And on top of all of that, uh, there are indications from Scripture that Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed our Lord, was from the tribe of Dan. Along with Dan, Judas is also one of the twelve, and like Dan, Judas is ultimately left off the list of the twelve, being replaced in this case by Apostle Paul. Uh, the most likely etymology for Judas's name, Iscariot, is man of Kiriath. There was a town in Judah by the name of Kiriath Jerim. The book of Joshua also identifies this place as Kiriath Baal, city of Baal, the pagan god of the Canaanites. And that's from Joshua 15, 16. According to Judges 18, 12, the Danites who migrated north camped just to the west of Kiriath Jerim. And this is the place west of Kiriath Jerim. This is why the place, rather, west of Kiriath Jerim is called Makane Dan to this day, based upon what is known of the Danite allotment. That's from Joshua 19, 40 through 46. It is generally concluded that this camp would have thus been within Danite territory, with Kiriath Jerim officially a town belonging to Judah, marking the triple boundary between Judah on the east, Dan on the west, and Benjamin on the north. Thus, 
Judges 18.12 not only draws a close connection between Dan and the towns of Judas, but also indicates that, in reality, there are two localities of note here, kiriath Jerim proper in Judean territory, and Makane Dan, in other words, Dan's camp, directly across the border in Danite territory. Given that it was neither it was rather common among the generation of the Babylonian captivity to tie their genealogies, genealogies to Israelite place names of their ancestry. This is from Nehemiah 7.1, for example, explains this. The existence of two Kirioths is significant in the case of Judas, for the Hebrew plural of Kirioth is indeed Kirioth. It's A versus O, uh, as far as the sound. That is to say, the suffix Kiriot of the full surname Iskariot, Hebrew Ishkarioth, uh, will then mean man of two Kirioth, two Kirioths in this case, and most likely refer to Judas's ancestral home as within the original territory of Dan. So, and there's a lot more to it, guys, but we repeatedly see red flags and road signs pointing us towards the tribe of Dan. The reason I bring this up, and this is, this is imperative, and, and I'm sorry for this video going long, but we need to understand this, we are being taught as a church today that he who curses Israel curses God, right? Well, unfortunately, the dispensational view that separates Israel from, from modern day Christians, even though we're told we're grafted in as a wild olive, olive branch and he is the vine and he is the source and he is the king of Israel, which means we are not directly genetically, but eternally Israelites in a sense that we will inhabit the eternal Jerusalem. We will be brought into his fold. We are all one. Um, to separate the two in and of itself leads to nonsense like modern day Israel worship. And Antichrist will very much take advantage of the term anti-Semite. You will be absolutely blown away how well he uses this term. And modern day church has taught Christians basically to worship the ground that any Jewish person potentially walks on, specifically having to do with Israel. And it's all because it's leading up to their prime, and I'm talking about the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about Jewish people in general. This is not a genetic thing. This is not a racial thing. This has to do with the fact that Satan has been using the same the same people that Christ came from specifically to fool the world up until now to bring on his most complete and most extreme trick where he's going to attack our heel by teaching us that we're not supposed to say their name, we're not supposed to be against them at all, and even if they're worldly, ungodly, and unbelievers through and through, somehow they have a special place with God. And in a sense, yes, that is true, but they are required to be believers, right? Not who, not all Israel is Israel, Romans, right? Uh, not all that, that have the genetic lineage of Israel choose to be a part of Israel. It's a choice. God wants willing followers. So we cannot allow ourselves to fall for this nonsense. We have to understand that, that the Bible very clearly points to these things repeatedly, intentionally, and it is a dangerous notion to ignore it and to join in on the worldly nonsense that is modern day Israel worship because it will very much be used against us very quickly. And don't you think for a second that the majority of churches that are out there today aren't gonna jump right in line with Antichrist. They absolutely are. They are because they've been trained and taught that, I, I can't be too cursory because again, this is this I think is cut and dry and we need to be honest about it. They have been taught that the ones that are pointed out as modern day Hebrews and Israelites can somehow do no wrong. And that is patently incorrect. All of us are sinners. It doesn't matter where we come from, what we do, what our fathers did, what what we would, what our hopes are, dreams are, it doesn't matter. It's about our choice for Jesus Christ or not. So I'm going to shut this down now because this is running long, but this is, this is, this is important. I'm going to put the links to the original information here. I, I parsed through it before I actually read through the entire section. Um, but it is important to understand he comes from Dan and it is going to be a massive trick and we are, we need to be ready for it. We don't need to be anti-Semitic. We don't need to curse anybody who's Jewish, but we need to be aware of the fact that their namesake and their, their lineage is going to be taken advantage of to such a massive degree that Antichrist is going to use that as a shield. And he's going to be broadly accepted for a reason. And when he takes over Babylon, it's very much going to be handed over to him as if it was already his.
and we need to be ready for it and we need to be ready to not accept him bless you guys i really hope this uh i hope this strikes at the heart of the matter forgive the video for running long i hope you all are doing well i hope you're still praying i hope you're staying in the spirit I hope you're being forgiven as regularly as you can. I know I forget to at times, but the truth is, guys, we're bound to sin and we need to stay close to our Lord. That's the only way we're making it out of this. Great reward comes for those of us who resist him and stay with our Lord and continue to grow and to help others. And I'm always praying that all of this is to your benefit and to your edification and your building up. Bless you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. This information is important. This video might get my channel shut down, but if it reaches who it's supposed to reach, I'm happy, and I hope you are too. Talk to you soon.